Hi everyone. It is December 7, 2017. Underneath this video that I posted last night on the medical proof of electromagnetic hypersensitivity, brain damage shown in the results of MRIs, I got this comment from Mark Pond. I would love to see you do a video about the effects of gadolinium. It causes another layer of complications for us. I had many difficulties from it. Gadolinium. I was like, what is gadolinium? Boy, there are so many toxins that so many of us have been subjected to, injected with, or that we swallowed, or that we were given an enema of. So, what is gadolinium? Thank you, Mark, because I, I, I had no idea that I had, throughout the decades of my adult life, had been ingesting or shot up with gadolinium. It is a chemical element. A chemical element with symbol GD and atomic number 64, gadolinium, is a silvery white malleable and ductile rare earth metal. It's a heavy metal that they inject us with if we are uh, taking, taking a uh, MRI of our brain or that we swallow if they are taking x-rays. Chuck Norris claims it poisoned his wife. It poisoned his wife. He has a lawsuit against three different companies for 10 million in damages. Norris, Norris, Chuck Norris and his wife, Gina, claim that she has gadolinium deposition disease from medical scans taken five years ago. And I just want to point out in this article that the European Medicines Agency took three gadolinium-based contrasts off the market in July due to similar concerns, though the agency noted it was a precautionary measure and that there wasn't much evidence of a health risk but clearly they felt it was important enough to take off the market. How is it that in the United States, the medical profession, the psychiatric profession, the FDA, the pharmaceutical company, the telecommunications industry, with all of the, the, uh, the Wi-Fi and the microwave and electromagnetic frequencies, how is it that the precautionary principle never comes into play in the United States? Could it be deliberate? Could it be that they want Americans sick and dying? And could it be that they want them sick because, wow, there's an awful lot of profit in sick people? So this uh, gadolinium, the FDA called for a warning label in 2017, or actually, I think the uh, this advisory uh, council or committee of the FDA wanted a warning label on gadolinium back in May. The new labels would warn that gadolinium may be retained in various organs, including the brain after use of these agents. The warning would also note a greater risk in specific patient populations including children and pregnant women. What? All right. Gadolinium toxicity. It varies from person to person. Um, if you have had a MRI, and usually you'll have a straightforward MRI and if they detect something unusual you'll go back within a short period of time and get injected with gadolinium that is the contrast material you'll get injected with it if you have an MRI of your brain 
and other specific organs. You will drink it if you are having problems with your gastrointestinal tract or kidneys. And they even give it rectally an enema if they're um, looking at specific organs. So, you know, I, I can't believe how many I have had and how many times I've been injected because of <laughs> medications put on the market as safe and they gave me a stroke. So then they inject me with a heavy metal to have those MRI images of my brain show up more clearly. Wow. You know, and I also have to say this, after having the stroke, when it was finally diagnosed as such, because I went for many, many years, God, uh, well, I don't even want to get into that, but when it was finally diagnosed, the neurologist sent me to a, I think she was a vocational psychologist. I had to have all of these tests to determine uh, what, in fact, were my cognitive difficulties. The predominant cognitive difficulties. And do you know that that psychologist wanted to put me on these psychotropic medications to help me with my cognitive difficulties that came from a stroke that was caused by psychotropic medications. That's how sick our medical and, and psychiatric profession has become. I, of course, declined. <laughs> and, and then you're treated as if you're treatment resistant. Oh, my God. So symptoms of gadolinium toxicity are generally experienced at an acute level shortly after having a contrast MRI and at a chronic level for years following their last contract, contrast MRI. Some people have the early acute symptoms that they can tie time-wise to their contrast MRI. Often they are very frightened and any appeals to the medical profession professionals involved in the contrast ordering or administration process meet with denial or disbelief regarding the connection of their symptoms to the contrast agent, gadolinium. And certainly there is no supportive relief. Others experience chronic symptoms that their doctors cannot explain through research or testing. Uh, testing, they make the connection back to the contrast MRI. The symptoms, pain, aching, burning, tingling, and or prickling pain, deep bone pain, typically in extremities or joints, and sometimes in the location where the MRI occurred, like the head. Dermal changes, like tight skin, lesions, hyperpigmentation, most often in extremities, Mus muscle issues, twitching, small local rapid contractions and weakness, ocular problems, worsening vision, dry eyes, bloodshot eyes, cognitive symptoms. Y you go to get an MRI so that they can determine whether or not you had a stroke, where the stroke was, and they're giving you an agent <clears throat> that may very well worsen your cognitive symptoms. Ear, nose, and throat, tinnitus, swallowing and voice problems, low body temperature, hair loss, itchy skin, balance problems, swelling of extremities. My God. Um, there is one symptom experienced by many that transcends several of the symptoms listed above. It is a sense of an electrified, vibrating, twitching feeling, typically just under the skin that is sometimes localized and at other times more 
a overall feeling. Sometimes it feels like something is crawling under your skin. My, how, how do you even determine what is the cause of the various symptoms that people have when they are symptoms of so many other so many other uh, medical issues or symptoms of Wi-Fi, symptoms of cell phone towers, cell phones, or symptoms of Lyme disease, symptoms of fibromyalgia. Uh, yeah, you know, I I have no idea why <laughs> I experience what I experience at this point. Um, you know, when you read that this gadolinium toxicity can cause chronic problems, and in reading the symptoms, I have many of those symptoms. <laughs> it's, it, it truly is a wonder that we still have Americans able to just walk about and function at all. It is much harder to describe the chronic experience because each of our bodies is different. Yes, I've been saying that for a long time. Um, saying it particularly because there are an awful lot of people who believe that their experience is everybody's experience. Um, and I say that so that people who think that, well, if you just did what I did, then everything would be hunky-dory for you, um, to really get them to reflect on their thinking, reevaluate that, because it, it's, it's stemming from judgment. And that then leaves the person who's experiencing the symptoms feeling judged and not supported at all. But since nothing has been published about patients with normal kidney function who develop NSF, we do not know if anyone with normal kidney function has died from their exposure to catalinium-based contrast agents. Um, and those who are experiencing kidney problems. My hunch is that they have taken a lot of catalinium. So if, if that's you, um, you really do need to do some research on this catalinium. But some have been diagnosed with small fiber sensory neuropathy. How many people have been diagnosed with neuropathy? Thyroid abnormalities, adrenal fatigue. I have adrenal fatigue. I have no doubt I have adrenal fatigue. I have had it for, well, certainly since I was put on those medications or took those medications. Um, but it is something that I have battled for ever. And when I think about all of the medications, all of the MRIs, all of the, the catalinium, all of the environmental toxins, yes, there will be a lot of people with adrenal fatigue that is very, very difficult to, um, to deal with, to to cure, quote unquote. Often these diagnoses indicate some sort of atypical presentation of the associated symptoms. Um, since no related medical research has been published, we have no way of knowing whether there is a connection between the gadolinium toxicity and these conditions, though the there have been studies, and when you have uh, institutions like the European Medicines, Medicines Agency, when you have the FDA coming out finally with a warning after so many decades 
of Americans being shot up or uh, they drinking or they getting enemas with gadolinium. With uh, gadolinium also comes with other chemicals. Then something is far wrong with gadolinium. So I will link below to um, to these articles. Please circulate this information because it's very, very important. You know, when I went for my MRIs, did I think that I was being injected with a poison, a heavy metal? Was I told that? No. And I kind of got, I kind of, I got really clearly that when I knew that the medications that I was taking was causing all of my behavioral changes, was causing all of those side effects that I was being told were not side effects. When I finally knew it, um, <laughs> my brain just went completely blank. I'm going to put you on pause to try to remember what I was going to say. Got it. I immediately got, oh my God, I have been so profoundly, powerfully inculcated in the myth of Dr. Knows Best. But even then, it took me probably another decade to finally say to myself, no more. I am no longer going to just let medical doctors do whatever the hell they want to do without doing the research. But at that time of all of those tests, all of those MRIs, did I once question these medical doctors, what they were doing, what I was being injected with? No. No. So that's why it's important for all of us to get the information out, circulate it, so that Americans can be informed, and then they can actually decide for themselves whether or not they will go and get these tests. Now, I am pretty sure that I have experienced many strokes. Once you have a stroke, you are susceptible to more mini strokes. And stress, a lot of, you know, things can cause that. And I am pretty sure that I have. When friends have said, you know, go get another MRI, I'm like, are you kidding me? No more. No more. I didn't even know about gadolinium. I just knew that I was not going to subject my brain to more radiation. But now, I definitely won't do it. Especially since... <laughs> You know, the first time they wanted to give me drugs that caused my stroke in the first place. You know, not as a cure for the stroke, but to help me with my cognitive symptoms? No. This, this world has truly become very dangerously insane. Everything needs to be questioned. And authority figures, especially those that wear the white coat, when you go into your doctors and you see these white coats, when you go into the hospital and you see these white coats, you better think to yourself, hmm, that's a sign of mental illness. It is called the white coat syndrome. Some of the symptoms, delusions of grandeur, severe arrogance, godlike um, Godlike delusions. Oof. Thank you for leaving the comment, Mark. Wow. Quite a time we're living, isn't it?